Hello folks, my name is Bhavesh Patel and today we are going to show you how easy it is to build a fully customized bootable Debian, CD, DVD or USB image or hard drive image. Today we are going to try and build a Debian live version of Debian stable version uh, 7.0 uh, as called as the VZ release. Uh, this is the stable release as of June uh, 2013. So first we'll go to the instruction on my site uh, on http colon slash slash bhavesh dot freeshell dot org slash blog slash linux slash triple one two 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 three 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 dot html. The URL is here. You can take a look at it and uh, you can Google it as well. And here I've documented all the instructions and I'm going to put the video here. Essentially it boils down to you know, just running three simple commands to build a live DVD. Uh, for those of you who know, uh, you know, with other live systems, it's pretty hard, but, uh, you know, the developers of uh, Debian Live have done a fabulous job of making it really dead simple to make a very, very basic and a simple bootable live uh, uh, media. So, first of all, what you need to do this magic is uh, you need to install the live build scripts and those come as part of the package. Um, for the interest of time, I've already downloaded it, but on your Debian version, you should have this package, and uh, this package consists of all the scripts which are used to actually uh, build the DVD. So going to the next command, uh, all we are doing is going to be like make a directory, uh, change to that directory, and run the command called LB config. Now what this does is essentially it sets up some of the parameters and uh, pretty much um, it's very automatic. I'll just show you some of the content of it. Um, say for example, open up the binary. It gives uh, the parameters which, which are completely changeable. Say for example, you have ISO hybrid which, which allows you to run uh, both ways or ISO image. Any of these things can be changed like, okay, boot up and live and all those things. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to keep it simple. I just wanted to give you guys an idea of uh, how this works. Uh, but essentially, um, after you do this, all you need to do now do is like ensure that you have the, about 2 GB or 1.8 GB of free space. I'm doing it in my RAM disk and so just to make it go faster. I have about 2 GB free space, which should be fairly good for my purposes at this point. And I'm going to then now just fire the last command called LB build and, you know, have it uh, go to a log file so that we can later analyze if anything went wrong. Um, essentially, this will do its magic. It will download some of the packages which are required for uh, this this version. In our case, basically, it just uh, downloads about probably 170 to 200 packages, which are like a really bare minimum core needed for a command line based uh, live DVD or a CD. And um, what I've done is like I've already downloaded uh, the packages. And what I recommend to people, again, this is completely optional. If you're going to redo this multiple times, which most likely you will end up if you are trying to build something. If it's just an experiment, one-time thing, then don't worry about it. But otherwise, I highly recommend you uh, set up a proxy like um, you know, APT Cacher or any of your favorite proxies so that it caches it and then uh, you, know, you don't have to re-download it and hit the Debian mirrors. There is smartness built in the system where it caches a lot of packages and everything, but for security and other thing, it still hits the Debian servers. Um, now this will go on for another eight or nine minutes. So if you guys want to skip forward and just uh, look at me testing the ISO image, you can do so. Otherwise, I'll give some commentary during um, during the process so that you know you roughly get an idea. And again, this is based on my understanding. Um, I don't claim to be an expert in this area. What I've seen is like I since I'm going through APT Cacher, I do get fail to retrieve in release. So I don't know why, but it doesn't impact anything. I've tested it a few times, so not to worry. Uh, at this point, I think what they're trying to do is like just download and install and configure it just the way it would have done when you would have done APT get installed manually. 
this is all happening in a charut environment uh, so that you know what will happen is like uh, it, it just builds the whole skeleton and keeps everything ready and then you know i think it compresses in squash fss that is like a squash file system and then rolls it up into an iso image with other maybe scripts or something which will uh, you know load debian basically so again it's just trying to get some of the packages we'll wait for a few seconds or probably a few minutes last time it took about 10 minutes when i did my dry runs let's see how much time it takes so yeah, right now it's downloading the linux uh, kernel and everything um, in my case it's very quick as you can see it's like 2 seconds the reason being as i said i have a um, apt cacher to cache my packages uh, so that it doesn't hit the debian mirrors because i i had to at least to prepare for this demo itself i had to run it like 4 5 times the other thing i've seen is like you get this warning cannot read table i think it's probably because the slash boot is not on a partition and it's on a file system so that's something you can ignore as well uh, it doesn't create any impact it's just uh, probably the developer who wrote it didn't probably take into consideration a file system being um, where the boot partition is but again i'm not an expert i'm just speculating uh, but i certainly know for sure it doesn't cause any problems So this is probably one of the biggest step where it compresses the charut environment into squash fs um just uh, some additional tips uh, just for my you know the, like nopix uses c loop compression i think there is a parameter i saw in debian live where you can probably use c loop i think one of the advantages of squash fs if i'm not mistaken is that squash fs uh, kernel is uh, i mean uh, the module of squash fs is already built into the kernel so you might not need an additional module but for c loop for sure i know um that you need to build the module and you need to load it into the kernel as well um so my, maybe this is this is why the system defaults to squash fs when you do a debian live build uh this might just take a few minutes so it probably last time i think it made a squash fs file of like about 300 mb maybe so let's see how much time it takes again keep in mind there's recording going on in the background with like uh, full screen and everything so it might be a little bit slower than my past runs Let's be a few more minutes, probably. Okay. There's smartness built in the system that even in the charuted environment, it uh, gets the uh, you know latest security. So, which which I was pretty impressed with, you know. Uh, and as, as it is, Debian Debian is a fabulous uh, release and focused on security and everything. But this just shows the thought process around building it. These are some other things like ISO Linux related, but uh, these things didn't impact me. So now is the final. Uh, it's trying to do a z sync uh, you know just to find the diff and you know but i think we are in the last few stages okay so we are done um let's take a look at uh, what we got here as you can see it created a bunch of things um like the binary.hybrid.iso um what we are going to do is like um, we are going to try out this iso image using qmu um because that's probably the fastest way of doing it So I'm going to open up a new window. Let me go to the folder. 
let's see tutorial one okay and last time when I had to do is like I had to give some permissions so I'm going to give just for the time being binary dot hybrid I'm going to re rewrite and execute permission I'm going to be a good person and run it under uh, non root user okay so let's see and here we go if our uh, let's see if uh, if what we cooked works it shows you the you know iso linux uh, you can choose various options this everything comes out of the box i'm going to probably move this guy to uh, the fourth window or third window so you guys can probably take a look As you can see, we completely were able to boot this system. And let me see why I'm not able to click it. Okay, I'm going to pause recording for a minute. 